Welcome back, friends. We are here at the Red Rock Center with another Art to Go bag. This is number two. And we have a new book that we're gonna read. And we're talking about a new artist. This is called Sandy's Circus, a story about Alexander Calder. And it's written by Tanya Lee Stone and illustrated by Boris Kolokov. There once was an artist named Alexander Calder, only he didn't call himself Alexander, and he didn't call the things he made art. Everyone called him Sandy. He had been making his objects since he was a kid. Sandy's mother was a painter. His father was a sculptor. Even though they moved from Pennsylvania to Arizona, to California, to New York, and back to California, his parents always made sure Sandy had a workshop and tools. He made his friends toys and jewelry from scraps of wood, leather, and wire he would pick up off the street. Sandy built his sister Peggy a castle for her dog, complete with a moat. He and Peggy made toy animals and played circus in the workshop. Even though Sandy loved creating things, he didn't always want to be an artist. He went to college and learned more about making things by studying to be an engineer. Sandy had different jobs, but never really liked any of them. Then he worked as a fireman on the, in the broiler room of a ship. One night he was sleeping up on deck, sailing between San Francisco and New York. When he woke, he was awestruck. On one side of the ship was a fiery red sunrise. On the other, the full moon shone like a silver coin. The sight made Sandy want to go to art school, and he did. Artists need work. A newspaper hired Sandy to draw the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. For two weeks, day and night, he went to the stadium drawing as many different parts of the circus as he could. He loved sketching the elephants, the flying trapeze, the lion tamer, and the dancers. Sandy sat in different parts of the theater to see from up high, down low, off to the side. The next year, 1926, he decided to go to Paris. Why Paris? Because that city was alive with art. And Sandy said, in Paris, it's a compliment to be called crazy. Sandy rode through the streets of Paris on his orange bicycle. He carried a roll of wire around his shoulder and a pair of pliers in his pocket. When Sandy bumped into a friend, out came the wire and pliers. He would twist and bend and curl while he chatted. And before they said adieu, Sandy would give his friend a gift. Voila, a small portrait of the person made of wire. One day Sandy made a little wire lion. He built a colorful cage for the lion. Of course, since the lion was a wild animal, it needed a tamer, so Sandy made him too. Then he made high wire walkers and a high wire for them to walk on and a safety net in case they should fall. A flying trapeze and a red stage. Sandy started to see a whole circus come to life before his eyes. Then he really got going. His huge hands worked with tiny pieces of wire, cork, cloth, buttons, yarn, string, leather, paper, and bits of wood. He twisted and shaped and curled and cut and curved until...
Sandy was ready to put on a big top circus show. His circus filled two suitcases, click, click. Sandy set up the stage with his animals and performers wherever and whenever he could. He went back and forth, back and forth, from Paris to New York, those suitcases always along for the ride. During one stay in New York, Sandy made more animals and acrobats. His circus grew to fill five suitcases. When it was showtime, out came the suitcases. Click, 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 click. A friend wound up the gramophone to start the music. Sandy boomed a greeting to his audience in the voice of his wire ringmaster, Monsieur Loyal, announcing the performance was about to begin. On his knees, this bear of a man worked the springs and strings and levers of his clever creations, making them leap, run, and dance. Hear the whistle blow, horns blare, See the flying Flippolini's flip, the lion's roar, the lion tamer tames, seals bark tossing a ball from nose to nose. Rigulat, the strong man, bends his toes and raises a huge barbell above his head, showing off for his beloved bearded lady. Horses gallop, birds flutter, dogs dance on whirly twirly legs. Katibo the clown plays tricks on his fellow performers. He dangerously distracts the axe flower, thrower just as he hurls his axe at the wire girl. Oh no, injury under the big top. But never fear, help is on the way. Sirens wail. Two wire rescue workers race in to carry the girl off on a teeny tiny stretcher. Sometimes the show went on for hours. There were chariot races and bucking broncos, a belly dancer, camel, and kangaroo. Sandy crawled around on his hands and knees, arranging his wire animals and circus folk, setting them in motion to perform for the crowd. After the grand finale, he brought them all back for a bow. Encore, encore, the crowd laughed and clapped and cheered for more. Word spread throughout Paris and New York. Everyone wanted to see Sandy's circus. They loved how full of joy and fun it was. They loved how Sandy's work was always in motion. People said he has discovered in playing a new world. His art has the force of the ocean. Sandy delighted in crafting things that moved. He made new kinds of art, hanging his shapes up, connecting pieces to each other with wire and letting the air drift and spin them into motion. In doing so, he turned ordinary objects into extraordinary art and invented the very first mobiles. And it all started with Sandy's magical, movable circus. The end. I love that part at the end where it says he used ordinary objects to make extraordinary art. That's what we're gonna do again. We're gonna take ordinary objects and make extraordinary art. Hopefully you've already picked up your art to go bag and we're gonna check out what's in it this week. Keeper bag, you might wanna use that. You also have a couple um, colors of yarn. They might be a little different than this. There's a lot of different colors and different patterns of things in each bag. There's some crafting foam, um, a variety of colors of pipe cleaners, a couple paper straws, a stick, and a template 
for um, making an acrobat. So there's a few things that you can make with these. If you want to, you can come up with something completely original, or I have a couple examples of things that you might wanna do with the things that you have in your bag. The first is making a mobile. Um, Sandy Calder invented the mobile. And so I took my stick and I used some fabric scraps that I had at home and wrapped it. I also used some yarn to wrap it to give it a little color or you could just leave it as it is. And I love to go for nature walks and the weather has been so pleasant that we have been out for a lot of nature walks at my house. So I gathered some more sticks and some leaves and I used the, my colorful yarn to tie it all together. I found some twirly whirly grass that I loved and I just tied them together and tried to make something that I thought looked pretty neat that I could hang inside the house or outside our door. You could also use um, recycled things that you found at home. Maybe you wanna use your craft foam and make some shapes like Alexander Calder did. You could use your pipe cleaners to connect things to the string. Um, and then the next one is when you're gonna use your template. So you have two here, two people. And what I want you to think about doing is to make a trapeze artist. You have a paper straw and you have yarn and all you're gonna do is thread the yarn through the paper straw, tie it up at the top and now you have a hanging trapeze. And then you'll go ahead and color your trapeze artist. I have a couple here that some young artists helped me to make and they colored both sides. You wanna color both sides because you'll see the back and the front and you can hang them however you like. Maybe you want to use, make two. You, you would have enough materials for that. Or you could make um, one where they hang together. They can hang onto each other's hands, whatever you come up with. The last one is um, what Alexander Calder started with. He used his ordinary materials, things that he found, and he made extraordinary art. So you have pipe cleaners in your bag. And at our house, we used a little bit of wire, which you can just find um, at the store in like the floral department if you want to, or you could use your, your yarn that's in your bag if you don't have access to wire, or pretty much anything that you can think of to hang it. You could make a scene that sits on the ground. What we did is decided to kind of put both things together and make a mobile of circus folk. We have a lion, the strong man. We used our bag here as his barbell, ripped it into pieces. These are some acrobats hanging down here and a ringmaster with some popcorn. So just another idea of things that you could do with your art to go bag this week. Again, I really wanna see what you guys are making. It's so fun to see what other artists, artists are doing. And if you wanna share those with the Red Rock Center, you can send them in a message or you can um, post them on our Facebook page, but we just really wanna see what you're doing so we can um, spread the word. If you guys, <laughs> Haven't picked up an art to go bag, be sure to get it from the Red Rock Center. And once they're gone, they're gone. So you'll want to come right away. I look forward to seeing what you guys are going to make. Have a good one.